Airbyte, making data available and actionable to everyone and everywhere. That's really the company mission and the project mission. And a little bit about myself, as Doc said, I'm Michel Tricot. I'm the co-founder and the CEO of Airbyte. And Airbyte is a data source integration platform. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about why open source solutions are the only future-proof method to power data movement as part of your data infrastructure. And during this talk, I will go over what data infrastructure looks like, how we're envisioning the, the concept of data infrastructure. And I will be demoing uh, the Connector Builder, which is a tool that allows anyone across companies to build new data connectors in a matter of minutes. But before we get started, uh, let me give you some uh, background about Airbyte. Um, we released Airbyte initially in late 2020, very alpha at the time, very, very, I, would, I can say it was pretty bad at the time. And today we have over 100,000 uh, deployments of the project and really, really proud to see the sheer number of contribution that we're getting from our community. And I think since for the past few years, we basically merged more than a thousand PRs from our 800 contributors. So extremely proud of how the community has been adopting the uh, adopting the project. And yeah, we've really built a very large community of users of data engineers, engineers around data integration. And actually, you know, when I, I look at these numbers, <clears throat> sorry, it's still the beginning. So it's really what has been achieved with the project over the past uh, three years only. And yeah, we're just getting started and we have a lot uh, that we want to achieve with, uh, with the project. So now that we talk about Airbyte, let's talk a little bit more about how we're seeing the world from the lens of data movement and from the lens of us as data engineers. Uh, and if you look at what has happened over the past few decades is it has evolved like tremendously. You know, when I remember myself in 2010, not so long after I started my, my career, the company I worked at had maybe five different places where data was stored. Uh, one of them was Oracle, maybe one was ADP or some HR system, and but that was very, very limited. And the only people that were actually interacting with that data they were data engineers. And actually at the time, data engineers was not really a, a title or a role at company. At, at the time, we were still calling ourselves software engineers. And now when I look around Airbyte and other company in 2023, you can see it across your company. We all use so many tools. We're creating so many silos across every single team we have public SaaS, we have APIs, we have databases, we have files, we have spreadsheets. Just we have data everywhere. And this is actually what we started to realize that today, every single company is actually becoming a data company. We all work at data company and we continuously create massive amount of data. And the question is, how can we make that data accessible and actionable to everyone across the company? And this is why we started Airbyte back in 2020. Uh, and at the time, what we noticed was really a shift in how data was being approached, especially with the rise of public cloud and the new data products that were coming up. Like you, you, you can remember about Redshift, you can think about Snowflake, you can think about BigQuery, you can think about Databricks and others. And so at that time, we were really thinking about what are the fundamentals of building a future-proof data infrastructure in a world of public cloud, in a world of cloud where people are not just running things on bare metal in a warehouse somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And we actually started to make a parallel with how standard infrastructure looks like. And when we look at it, it's basically three main pillars. The first one is network. The second one is storage. And the last one is compute. And just look at how AWS started. For example, they started with three main products, network, S3, and EC2. So they were building these fundamentals for just the, the, the regular standard infrastructure. And they built every single one of their products on top of it. Now, when you're looking at it from the a data perspective, it's really not that different. And I hope that if you could take one thing away from what I'm just talking about is, always apply 
these fundamentals of infrastructure into how you're building your data infrastructure. It's just, we're just renaming things at that point. Network, it's actually, we call it data movement. Storage, nothing really new, but it's really about thinking about how the data is gonna be stored and how you're gonna be managing your source of truth. And finally, compute is what we call processing here. So it's all about how you extract insight from that data and how you're making that data valuable. So this is really how we're seeing the world of building strong data infrastructure that can power everything, every effort that you're doing with regard to data within your company. And when you look at it, this data is used for three main reasons. Uh, that's the three main ones that we're really focusing on and that we believe are going to cover most of the use cases. The first one is analytics. Uh, I'm sure you've heard a lot of talks today about it. Uh, it's about understanding the past and helping teams and, and, and users to make decisions for the future. Like for example, it can be my exec team needs to know what is the current company revenue. It is not something that is actionable by itself, but it's something that allows you to understand the past and make decisions for the future. It can be about which customer is taking the most time from my customer success or my support team. Like where are we spending our time as a, as a, as a company, as a team, as an organization? Or it can be product team that are um, releasing a new feature and they want to understand who is using it, how they are using it, where they are successful, where they are failing. And all of that is just this powering this analytics use case. The other one is more what we call the operation one, which is about how can you drive more efficiency within your company? Meaning, how can you get data to work for you instead of just doing things without that data? And you can think of a sales team, for example, they have their list of leads and by pushing data into their system, into their operating system, suddenly they can make better decisions. They can be more efficient during a call with a potential customer or same thing for marketing. If you can push the right information for an outreach campaign, that campaign is gonna be more efficient. And that's really what we see as operations as a use case that drives more efficiency. And finally, we have AI and especially what has been started in, uh, in 2023, like it became like so big. It's if you look at all the products that are built on top of LLM, for example, we can now understand data and just retrieve it like never before. Uh, I mean, just think about how, like we were talking about support before, but let's say you can just bring that data and look at all the chat data that people are having with their customers boom, with this new type of technology, now you can extract quantitative data about this chat. You can understand what is the customer sentiment, what are the summarizing, what are the key issues that people are seeing. And this is something that was very hard, very labor intensive before, and now it's being enabled and automated. Uh, it can also be about answering questions about internal knowledge base. And, it's, and basics is just the, the beginning of how AI is impacting companies. It's just it removes that very heavy lifting and having a lot of people that have to do that classification, that summarization. Now it can be automated. And the thing is to address actually the three main use case, the access to the data is the key. And data movement is a pillar of that future. And it relies on control and access. So control is deciding who can access your data, vendors, internal users, external teams, contractors, etc. It's about adapting to local regulation or internal uh, policies, like maybe this piece of data that contains social security number should not go into that warehouse that is being used by the marketing team or the sales ops team. Uh, access is more about the platform needs to be able to extend and to really grow with your future needs. Like today you have the needs that you have today, you know which sources you have, but what are you going to be using in three, four, five years down the line? Like what are the new silos that you're gonna be creating? And of course you can see that there is a bit of a healthy tension in a way between these two main uh, concepts that, uh, that make data movement great. And, but in one end, you want the data to be safe. On the other one, you want it to be accessible, but both are really mandatory. And the goal here is really for data movement is 
how do you facilitate the access of data while creating the say say the, the right safeguard and this is why we decided to build airbyte as an open source solution is because we wanted to really address these two key uh it's like challenges that are uh, related to data movement so i mean obviously i'm a i'm a very big believer in uh, solving data movement with open source uh and for for and for me it's for four reasons like building data movement requires open source the first one is because it creates a standard uh, that is shared across many companies. Like if companies can talk the same protocol, the same language for exchanging data or within the same company, you're using the same language, then data can flow, data can move. The second one is about control. Like being open source gives you the control over how you're deploying Airbyte or the solution and how you're operating the software. And the third one is you can customize the software to fit exact to fit it exactly to your need um, and finally like because it's so community driven learning from the community like the feedback loop is so fast and i think this is what you need like you need to have this ability to understand which feature you need to build which connector you need to build what is broken what is working how you're deploying and having that super tight feedback loop with the community is what has helped us for example to move so fast and this is really why we've built Airbyte as an open source solution is to address these four and to get these four advantages of having an open source platform. Now, the way we build it uh, is, well, it runs everywhere. I mean, you can run with Kubernetes, with Docker, everything is containerized. So it can run on every single cloud. And we know that a lot of our community members are actually deployed Airbyte across cloud that are not even like officially supported today. So they have the control of where it's running. It can be extended so that you can access every single piece of data that you want. Uh, and this is powered by this powerful data exchange protocol that explains what data should look like while it's in transit. And finally, you have the platform that is com that is comprised of a scheduler that ma manages when, how data is moving, state management, and everything can be controlled either via a UI, via an API, or via a Terraform uh, provider. And that allows you to have more GitOps type of practices in how you're building your data pipelines. So we build really about to address this first fundamental of data infrastructure. And this is really all the effort that we've been putting into the project with our community is really about addressing data movement and yeah, get the data to move. Uh, now, before, so I said that, yeah, extensibility is a key uh, it's key to solving data movement and as an open source solution airbyte is fully extensible thus we believe that it is super it, it is future proof because you can address any new silo that you're going to create and user can customize any connector beyond what is available off the shelf and actually yeah as i said at the beginning a few months ago we released a new tool to make it possible to build your own connectors from scratch with extremely limited coding and for this product, which was really about the speed of development was a key aspect of it. So how fast can you get a connector off the ground and the speed of maintenance. So adapting to source changes. So I'm going to do a demo. Actually, I'm going to be uh, very sorry because it's not a demo, it's a video. I'm traveling and uh, I want, I didn't want anything to go wrong during that, during that, that talk. Uh, but I just did it an hour ago. So it is very accurate and, uh, Let's uh, let's do it. I'm going to be building a connector for Stripe, pushing data into a spreadsheet. And I know we already have a Stripe connector as part of the platform, but I really want to demonstrate how fast you can create a new connector from scratch, even for more complex and more uh, more complex APIs. So let's do it. Um, there you go. So here. I'm on our cloud product, but the same thing is available on uh, on open source. And the first thing you're doing is you're basically providing the key, the, the, the key, the, the, the URL for hitting the API. Then you're configuring how you're going to authenticate toward that API. Here for Stripe, it's an API key. Um, don't worry, the key that you're seeing is a, is a test key that uh, Stripe is providing. So next, no security issues. Then once you've configured these two main thing, you're going to start configuring your stream 
And here I've picked the customer stream, uh, which is pulling all this concept of customer from the Stripe API. Very basic configuration. You can test it live. And it's going to show you the very raw version of the data. Now you can see that the data is actually stored within the data field. So we're going to say, tell the, the builder that every piece of data is contained in this data field. And you can see that now the number of records that is being extracted from that source is 10. Next, we go to the pagination. Uh, so as you know, they, like APIs are paginating answers and responses. And we want to make sure that we can iterate across all these pages. Um, for Stripe, it's what we call cursor pagination, where you say, I want everything after a specific cursor, and I want to, you to stop paginating uh, after, uh, like once the response says that I don't have any more data. Here, page size is two, and you can see that now we can iterate across all the different pages of the API and collect all the records. Uh, so here, let's put it to 100. Up, oh, it's a little bit more data, so it's a bit slower. And here you can see every single page is being read and every single page is importing 100 pieces of data. Um, now, one thing that makes Airbytes really powerful is this ability to handle incremental syncing, which is every time you sync, you're only going to pick what has changed or what has been newly created. And that allows you like for very, very fast data movement and very, very smart data movement. And here, so that's really how the, the API is talking about configuring it is only taking records that have a change value that is greater than uh, a specific date. And now we're going to create a second stream charges. And that's where we say in going very fast for build is charges is basically using customer as a template. So it means that now you can create a lot of breadth into the data coverage of that connector by just copying existing streams and just replacing that with the right endpoint. So we have that first connector, took us barely two minutes. No, we publish it as part of the Airbyte platform. Always the same, same thing on open source. Uh, you can, it's, it, it works out of the box. So we're going to create a source, meaning a place where data is being is currently siloed. Let's test it. We provide the information about since when do we want to pull the data from and all the credentials that are necessary. So let's wait. Perfect. So the source is created. Um, I also created, uh, before doing the, the demo, uh, a spreadsheet, an empty spreadsheet, where I want to push the data to. So you can see that, uh, that spreadsheet here. Now, let's connect the two together. So the first thing is we're going to decide what kind of replication do we want. Here, we're going to do a manual one. And we're only going to import the charge, uh, the charge data. Uh, so let's configure the connection. So what we've done here is we've connected the source, Stripe, the destination, Google Sheet, a few pieces of configuration about how we want it to happen. And now the data, like now the Airbyte platform is actually taking care of reading the data, looking at the schema, extracting uh, all these pieces of information and moving it into a place where whomever owns that Google spreadsheet will actually be able to extract value out of that data. So let's wait a little bit. So all of that is actually also configurable using the Terraform provider or the API. So UI is nice, but if you if you have different type of practices, yeah, you have GitOps type of practices, you can do it. Uh, and boom, here we go. So basically five, five minutes, we built a connector that can pull data from a complex API, send it into a spreadsheet, get the replication running and the data is there. So now people can actually really focus on extracting the insight rather than spending time moving data around. So let me go to the to the next slide here. Um, well, this is a, a very, I, I'm a huge fan of that statement. It was from one of our very early adopter of, uh, of the builder. And it summarized a very, very well why we build it. We want to save time for everyone. Like our time is so precious, and especially when we need to be working with data, when people keep asking for more and more analysis, more and more uh, uh, reports. We want to really let that and have a platform that works for us. Um, and so, so those are some numbers that we've seen from our open source uh, deployment. Is the connector? Builder has really been one of the fastest growing product that we've released since Airbyte itself. And since May, uh, I think it was mid-May, 
we have over like 2,000 custom connectors that were built with the builder and over 1,000 that are running every single day. So with this tool, we really want our user to be able to build any connectors that they will ever need without having to switch vendor or adding weeks of engineering time to build these connectors in-house. Now, not only do we want with data movement to support any connectors that you will ever need, we also want to support more and more use cases where data is required. And in 2023, what we started to realize is how everything that we've built actually applies to the AI world. Like you can have the most powerful AI system, it will still rely on having access to that data. And so here is really so an opportunity to help AI engineers to actually access data and to not reinvent the wheel of building data pipeline. And this is the way like we can enable them and help them focus on building the next generation of AI apps rather than moving bytes around. Um, and a few things that, are, that just recently became available uh, on Airbyte as off-the-shelf connectors is actually the ability to pull from unstructured data sources, so PDF, spreadsheet, text, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and moving it into vector store destination. So stores that are very, very much customized for AI type of retrieval. Um, and this is something we're very, very proud to have released uh, in, the past few, in the past few months. Now, a lot of the focus that we've had since we started Airbyte was bringing data into data warehouses. Uh, now, what we really want is to really close what we call the data movement loop, which is both the import of the data, but also the extraction and the distribution of that data. We call it publish. Um, and this, like in 2025, uh, sorry, 20, I live in the future, sorry. Uh, in 2024, uh, we will be bringing the early version of publish as part of Airbyte. And we already prototyped the first version of it by giving the ability to publish data into vector databases. And we actually want to start tackling some early uh, reverse ETL use cases. So pushing data into vendors API. So with everything that we're building with the product, what we want is to build a full open source data movement platform where data can be brought from anywhere to everywhere and where team can actually spend more time extracting value from data rather than moving data around. And yeah, we're super proud to be doing it with all of you because we're basically all building uh, Airbyte together. We're, we're building Airbyte for our community here. 